Hello guys, today we're going to be unboxing another Lynx Hilo, except this time it's not mine, it's my brother's. Abe just dropped three fucking grand for his audio build. He's going to copy me, you know, he's pretty smart about that. He's like, Victor, I see you have a lot of professional stuff like the workstation, like the audio setup, you know, pretty much a, a studio. He's like, I want that too, because Abe... I believe Abe's a gamer, and he, he wants to venture into streaming down the road, and he wants to have a decent audio setup. He wants to blow everybody else out of the water. He's not going to be using some cheap headset mic or some $100 Yeti mic, which everybody says, oh, Yeti mics are the best. They're not. They're fucking garbage. But here's Abe. You probably won't see him on the camera shot, but Abe, go ahead and say hi. Hey, guys. So, Abraham, how you feel about dropping three grand? It's pretty tight. Now, when I bought this, it was $2,300. I've had mine for a little over a year now. But with COVID and just how the market is, everything technology-wise, electronics has skyrocketed. So, um, Abe, how do you feel about dropping three grand? Kind of kind of hard on the wallet, right? Yeah, we'll make it. But I know you. You, you got to have a big e -peen, right? You know what that is, right? <laughs> yep. So, uh... He's going to unbox this. How you feel? A little bit excited? Yeah. So I don't know if you've watched my entire Lynx Hilo video or parts of it. You've seen how it's been unboxed. I've already unboxed one, so Abe's going to be unboxing it because he's the one that spent all this money. So he's he's got to experience it. So I'm not going to really overview the box. You guys have already seen what that looks like. So um, Abe, go ahead and you can lay it down, and um, I'll let you know if I need to readjust the camera angle. But So see, we have on the side there. So Abe, go ahead and unbox it. So it just has a tab on the bottom. It should just slide open and lift up. And right on the top, you'll see, like last time, you could see somebody manually check this and make sure that it was within spec and passed. So you notice, they write down serial number. They show you everything that they did. And they'll even have multiple supervisors sign off on it. Now tell me, when you buy a studio product, you have high um, quality assurance. So they test everything. So they did a 24-hour burn-in. Um, now they say it will have the current firmware, but that's when they had it in the that's when they had it at the factory. You know what I'm saying? This could this when this gets sent to Sweetwater, it could be sitting on their cell for you know six months to a year. But you see all that stuff you did. So what do you think about that? Do you get that on normal consumer electronics? Probably not. No, definitely not. That's pretty nice, huh? Yep. So they get the USB cable, which we're only going to be using USB to upgrade the firmware. We're going to be connecting this via AES-CBU, which is a more professional interface. But we will update the firmware in here. And as you can see, Abe's unboxing the manual. This has a really nice paper manual. What do you think about that, Abe? Yeah, it's pretty nice. So go ahead and feel that manual. And tell me what you think. Oh, yeah. It feels pretty high quality. And it's in color. Did you notice that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. But we don't need manuals around here. And this rips right off. Use this to hook it up. Ugh. Yeah, to update the firmware. Now, Abe, I want you to look at how this is packaged and what you think about how it's been packaged here. Do you think it's going to get damaged in shipping? Uh, hopefully not. Looks pretty good. Whoop. Toss that puppy over there. <clears throat> nice little power cord. Yeah, and you'll notice on the Lynx Hilo, it uses the standard uh, pinout. So if you need a shorter cable, longer cable, you don't have to use this cable. Isn't it nice that you, you can use whatever cable you want? Yep. Yeah, it gives you the option. Good stuff. We'll set the side. Go ahead and... That's the back. This is the front. So it goes like that. What do you think about these foam pads, how it's packaged there? Yeah. It's pretty good. And then it got speed in the front. I'm gonna take this off the back. Put those back in the box. 
How you feeling? Excited? Yep. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what she's about. Now look at that. Now look at that, Abe. Now tell me, just feeling it. Does that feel like a premium product? Oh yeah. Yep. You you would give tell. that a little full blown metal. See the front looks. <clears throat> Well, got got a nice little brushed look on the front. Yep. <clears throat> now I'm gonna get another camera angle. We'll look at the front and back, and we'll have Abe's initial impressions on the build quality. Okay, so there's the front of the unit. Now I'm gonna have Abe get down here and look at the front, feel it, look at the graphics, and tell me what he thinks about the overall build quality. Um, you press the power button, feel what you feel about that. Move the potentiometer, take a look at it. Oh, that's kind of nice. Oh, this has a little, uh... It's a step potentiometer. Yep, yep. Uh, and, like and the reason they do stepped is, uh... So if you know a particular uh, level you you like, you can go back to that specific level. Yeah, it's not just a free-flowing mm -hmm. dial. It's like tick, 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 tick. I like that. And this, this power button, that's... That's oddly satisfying. But look at the, uh... Brushed aluminum and everything. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it really looks high-end. I, I like the look of it a lot. Now, try to just lift it up in place. Don't really move it around, but lift it up and feel about the weight. Oh, yeah. You, you, you can tell it's, it's it's built pretty heavy. How much do you think this, this weighs, give or take? Uh, 16 and a half pounds. <laughs> You're very specific. So, Abe, go ahead and sw switch that round to the back so we can see the back of this bad boy. And this is where Abe's going to probably... uh. Get a little excited. Now, Abe, I want you to come over here and look at this and tell me, tell me what you think about the back of that. Yep. Uh, Does that look like something that goes in a commercial studio? Yeah, not gonna lie to you, I, I got no fucking idea what I'm looking at, but uh, it looks very sexy. <laughs> well, these are all these are you two XLR ends, so these will take um, professional line level inputs from high quality studio preamps, any outboard gear, reel to reel tape decks that you see in professional studios. These are your lines out. That's if you're going to use it as a DAC, which you're going to use in Topping D90 as a DAC. These are your monitors out to, you know, your actually monitors, which are like reference grade speakers in a studio. Mm -hmm. This is your expansion slot. This is, um, you can swap this out for any di any other different interface. You can have FireWire, um, Thunderbolt. You can have um, Pro Tools DigiLink. Wow. So if you're doing a Pro Tools rig, um, but in your case, you're going to be using the AES EBU. So this right here, see where it says AESN? Yep. That's where you're going to hook up um, an AES EBU cable directly to your Lynx AES16. Card. Nice. And you won't have to worry about any USB glitchiness because, you know, USB can be kind of flaky at times. Yeah. It's not the most reliable. Um, so in the studio, most people are using either AES EBU, they're using ADAT, which this has as well, or they're going to be using something like DigiLink, which is a Pro Tools proprietary connection to like a Pro Tools digital audio workstation. Wow. Which it might be a little bit above your head, but I'm, I, you know, anybody watching that works in a studio, this is all common knowledge to them. But so you have your AS EBU in and you have your AS EBU out. You'll be using the AS EBU out because you're, you're going to use this as your ADC. Mm -hmm. You have a tactile um, power on and off button in the back. Uh, let, let me cough and feel that. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is nice. <laughs> and you'll see how socketed power. I like that. You know why? You're not dealing with any DC. Yep, change, change the link, change everything on that power. Yeah, and you're not dealing with some shitty fucking AC, DC adapter. You're not dealing with no adapters. You can use whatever fucking cable you want. So in the studio, this might be way too short. You know, so they can use their own long custom cables, whatever, you know. I think I've got a better one at home anyways. Yeah. So you also have your SPDIF in and out. This will allow you to send digital... Um, Digital PCM in and out from like, um, say like an external DAT recorder, a CD player, um, all different types of digital inputs. It could even be a console. It could be an, it could be a receiver, whatever. You have your SPDIF in and out, which is Toslink. So like me, you know how how I have the Audio Engine B1, the Bluetooth receiver. Yep. I'm able to hook up that and bring it as an input into the Lynx Hilo, and I can also spit it out through the Topping D90. I, it gives me a lot of flexibility. I have a lot of routing options. Mm -mm -mm. And I think you're, you're probably going to want to be getting the Audio Engine B1 later down the road, yeah, too. So Bluetooth. you'll be able to send Bluetooth in and out and um, through the unit. And it'll, it'll transfer via a digital signal, so it'll be higher quality. Oh, that's, sick. that's awesome. 
You also have work clock in and out. This is more um, geared towards a studio professional environment where you have racks and racks of different converters because, you know, in a studio, you need to have, like, 64 inputs or whatever because you have mics for, like, every different thing. You have a mic on the guitars. You have a mic on the drums. You have overhead mics. You have mics for each of the singers. You, you get me why you need a lot of channels? Yeah. So you would have, like, just racks full of these, and you have to sync up the timing, the clock on all of them. So they're taking samples at the same time. So you have work clock in and out to be able to sync that up. It's more of a professional studio thing. And since this is a professional device, you're going to have that professional option. Cool. You also have a battery input. This is more geared towards field recording. So there's a specific battery pack that a lot of professional sound guys have when they're doing like Hollywood movies, movies and indie films. And the Lynx Hilo, Lynx put that on there. So if they have this like on a cart that moves or whatever... Mm -hmm. um, they can just plug in a battery pack. They can be out in like a desert filming something, and they can have they can be using the Lynx Hilo as the ADC for the sound, which is extremely overkill. But Lynx is like, yeah, they might use this for field recording, <laughs> so they put a, the battery connector on there. What do you think about that? Kind of crazy. Wow, that would be, probably probably be more like a high end film. Yeah, I would I would expect a high budget film because most people are going to be using more portable um, field recorders. But if they were wanting to use this, I mean. I mean, there's been quite a few really, really high-budget films like Jurassic Park that used the Pacific Mark songs for the uh, the film scores, which the film scores is like the the theatric music in the film. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's the back of it. So we unboxed it. What are your initial impressions of the whole overall build quality and everything? Looks great. I want to power it on. So Abe's going to be the one to power it on. Go ahead and hook up a power cable. And you can just plug in to any of these right here. They're, they are UPS protected, so if the power flips or anything. So he's gonna he's gonna plug it in the socket there. Snaps right in there like that. Take this over here, plug it in. Now when you first plug it in, listen, you're gonna hear relays click. Oh, probably because the switch isn't powered on. So Abe, flip this flip this around so they can see the front of it. Or turn it around. And I'll let you know if we need to readjust the view or anything. No, that's that's beautiful. I mean, if you look, see this on camera, Abe, you couldn't have a better shot. All right, flip the so Abe, back. Abe's going to flip the switch in the back, and I want you to listen. This has a bunch of professional relays in it for all the different various inputs and outputs. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to hear them click when you first turn on. Yep. I heard them all. Yep. Oh, blue light in the front lights up. I see a green... A couple green lights on the inside. Yeah, those are all the boards. Now, what I like about this, I told you how you you can swap out that expansion card. So if you were going to like a Mac and you want to hook up via FireWire, boom, that card just pops out. Kind of like a PCI Express card in a computer. Now, mm -hmm. tell me that's pretty cool how they made that modular. Wow, that, that that's pretty cool. And that also means anytime down the road, like if there's a new um, communications protocol that comes out, all links have to do is just make it make a card. Expansion card and pop it right and just in. pops in. Yeah. Wow. So on the front, you have the screen. Now this isn't the high highest resolution screen because you know you're not supposed to be watching movies on it, but um, take a look at the what you think of it. It's a touch screen. Everything's touch. I, I prefer to use like a stylus, so I'll take like my old Note 4 stylus and use that when I'm touching the screen. Yeah. But um there's the front of it. Cool. Wow. You can configure what the view is, if you want view meters, whatever, you know. That'll be something for a later video when we go to set actually set it up. But we are gonna we are gonna hook this up to the laptop and update the firmware. Hey, let's do it. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go over the computer, I'm gonna download the latest uh, driver and also download the firmware updater. And um, we'll plug in a USB and we'll continue there. Okay, so now Abe is going to go ahead and plug in the USB cable in the side here. Go ahead and do that. It's just right there on the side. And the computer should go, bling, bling. You know how it goes, right? Yep, so we see right here it pops up, install device driver software. That usually takes uh, a minute or so. Okay, so now it says, oh, it's still working. It's still working on. <laughs> now this will emulate like eight different inputs because of all the different uh, routing options and all the different digital inputs. So you'll see a whole lot of stuff in the uh, sound properties for this. That's why it takes a little while because it has to has to install a driver for each one and boom, put it into the Windows Sound Manager. Okay, so it says your device is ready to be used. So now if I go into um, 
playback devices, we should now see the Lynx Helo in there. Yep, it's in there. So if I wanted to output the Lynx Helo or input to it, I could, but we're not doing that in this video. So now I'm going to use the Lynx, um, the firmware updater. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And it should now, within a second, communicate over to the Helo and um, see that it, is, it um, has an update. So right now, it says, the Helo is running version 8.11 and released on September 20th. This is showing 8.8. .8. <laughs> That's an older version. That doesn't make sense. Thanks, Hilo. 8.11. So the current firmware that's on there is from September 2021. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> I'm going to reopen this. I believe it said there was 8.12 available. I remember seeing that on their site. Huh, that's kind of weird. Why is stuff always weird for you, Abe? Look at this. So it says your current firmware, look at this. 8.11, released in 2021. New firmware, 8.8, .8, 2020. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that kind of weird? Yeah. When I updated mine, I didn't have the issue. Of course, it showed a newer, newer version and I updated. Yeah, that seems to be my luck. So we're going to go to the site and download the latest one and manually try to install it if that's possible. I believe it is. So we're going to go ahead and click back. So you know what version's on there, right? 8.11? So it's saying that there is um, Lynx Helo version firmware 8.12. So one version newer. That was released in December of 2021. So we're going to go ahead and update to that one. And we'll see what happens. Click download for Windows. So that, that was kind of weird that the updater said an, there's an older version available. Do you want to update to an older version? <laughs> I got yeah, no idea. But at least we can go and pull the actual latest firmware. They give you options, I guess, right? We're going to see what this does. So what did that do? Oh, there we go. <laughs> so now it says Hilo USB. Now it says 8.12. How's that look? A lot better. A lot better. So now we're going to go ahead and click Get Firmware. And now it's going to download it. And Abe, if you go look at the front of the screen, it should be saying, it should be saying something soon. So now we're going from 8.11, which was September 2021, to 8.12, which is December 1st, 2021. So that is an update. So now I'm going to click Update, and then it says you're about to program the Hilo. We'll go ahead and click OK. When you do this, you want to make sure it's critical, you don't lose power, and then you have this plugged in the UPS. The computer and the Hilo is plugged into a UPS. So now I'm going to hit OK, and now it's downloading the firmware. And now the Hilo should be showing something on the screen. Abe, is it showing something on the screen? Just do not turn off either item. Pretty cool, huh? Look at that download speed. Flying. <laughs> well, you know it has to download from an internet first. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to have this... Uh, Set up, can you? Yeah, it'll be nice once everything's... So, Abe, tell them about your workstation build, what it's mainly geared towards, how right now you're using it for gaming, but down the road you're going to have ultimate gaming build. How uh, how you want to have a similar like studio audio stuff like me. You want to have high-end DAC, high-end ADC, all that kind of stuff. Just to try, kind of explain your setup, your use case for it. And we'll also talk about microphones a little bit here in a bit while this updates. And we'll see... Uh, well, you can ask some of the viewers, hey, what do you think I should get? Do you think I should get the SM7V or the RE20? I have a lot of uh, musicians and stuff and artists that watch my, my channel now because of all my audio videos. But go ahead and just talk about your workstation build, what your plans are down the road. You're going to have a gaming build. 
Yeah, so right now, like Vic was saying, I got my workstation build. It's completely built out, finally. I'm working on the audio portion, trying to piece together everything. So this was a big check on that list. Right now, I'm waiting on the preamp, the equalizer, a microphone, and then all the cables to hook everything up. But primarily, I use my workstation just as like a... Uh, and all around, I use it for gaming, anything, uh, a lot of like watching YouTube videos. Uh, I do a lot of Photoshop, just, you know, like an all around build. But I'm hoping down the line, hopefully when the 40 series cards come out to go ahead and build a gaming PC to get that off the workstation and keep the workstation primarily for like video editing, high end uh, graphics, editing, all, all, all that kinds of stuff. But Hopefully, once I have this audio set up, it'll be a happy medium hook right into both systems, and I'll be able to use this primarily for just like any type of audio recordings I want to do. I'm still bouncing bouncing between the two mics, like Vic was saying, whether I should go with a dynamic or a condenser. So, Well, I think you generally are going to want to go dynamic because your room's pretty noisy. Um, but um, we're going to go ahead and Abe flip the switch because the firmware... The firmware has been updated, so all you gotta do is just flip it off, count a couple seconds, and then flip it back on. 1001, 1, 1002, 1, 1003. Back on. Helo boots up. Now we'll go into its, uh, its interface here settings, system, and then, uh, about Hilo. And now we could see right here the firmware version. I don't know how you guys can see that on camera. The firmware version is 8.12, released December 2021, and that's the latest version. So Abe's Link's Hilo is fully updated now. Cool. So Abe's going to have pretty much a, he, right now his workstation is pretty much the same as mine, except he has a 3070 as a graphics card because he he does game <laughs> it's not really the computer to game on but i think it says it still performs pretty pretty decent yeah it's still pretty top end i mean i still pull great fps no lag it, it, it's honestly just a great overall system to do whatever you want to do on with now for the audio audio setup he's gonna he's gonna have a similar audio stack than me he has the topping d90 the a90 ordered now he has a Lynx helo which that was a big financial boom bump you know it's this thing's not cheap this is studio gear but he's he he has a furnace that's pretty loud and when he when it's on i think you can hear it in your bedroom yeah the bedroom can get a, a little loud depending on what what's on around me um so that's why i've been probably going with the dynamic mic so yeah since it's gonna be noisy he's probably gonna he's he, right now he's looking between the electro voice re20 and the sure sm7b which those are two very popular um, microphones for um, dialogue, and Abe's kind of Abe's kind of bent. He don't know, so Abe, you might want to throw it out there and be like, "Hey guys, what do you think I should go with? I'm leaning more towards this or that." Yeah, I, I honestly, I'm I'm open to suggestions. Anything. Um, I, I really like the look of the RE20. I know it's a condenser, so it'll pick up more. It's a mic. It, no, it's a dynamic. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that, that's all you know. The yeah. RE the RE20 is a dynamic, just like the SM7B. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm still in the market, looking for recommendations. And Abe said he's probably just he might be like fuck it. I'll just buy both, have them in my arsenal. Yeah, hot swap them in and out. Yep. And of course, down the road, uh, I think Abe wants to be like me. He wants to have an arsenal of microphones because you can swap them in and out and you know for different applications like like the Neumann TLM 103 or even the U87A. I think Abe says he's open to add microphones to his uh, arsenal down the road. Yeah, definitely open to suggestions, open to anything. So anyway, guys, I think that's going to wrap up this video. We just wanted to Abe to unbox his uh, Lynx Hilo. Abe, you can go ahead and turn it off. And um, any final thoughts on this? No, thank y'all for watching. It's been a uh, a pleasure. Okay, guys. We'll see you guys in the next video.